The best thing about having a pond is the variety of creatures inside of it, and I wanted to bring those inside, so it was time to make an aquarium that represented them, which would mean that I could bring them in and look at them during the day, so it was time to get started. I originally started with some sponges, and I was going to cover them in moss, but they didn't really work. Then I got some dragonstone, and nothing really fit properly, and I didn't have any more, so it was time to make something fit. I got some sandstone, and it was time to start chopping. And voila, it fit inside the aquarium. Now, it was still just a big stone, so it needed a bit of editing and a bit of refining. After I'd finished carving, I put it on my desk, and it looked pretty good. It was time to add some small stones and some sand. Filling the sides of the aquarium with sand meant the inhabitants couldn't go behind them and hide from us. I then added two philodendrons. Now these had long roots already because they'd been in water, and we could use these long roots to frame the stone like a picture. And with the addition of a little bit of moss on the top and in the middle, we were pretty much done. It was going to be a very simple scape that showed off the creatures inside of it. And although it would only do it the once, when we added the water, the little waterfall I carved actually worked. And once filled up, it was a really good start. But it was now time for the inhabitants, and we got one that I didn't expect. Just a little beetle that had come in from the moss from outside. And after playing about in the pond for a little bit, we got a dragonfly larva, and you could see him breathing through his thorax. And as soon as he began to settle, well, he started hunting the beetle, and we couldn't really have that. So it was time to try offering a meal. And whilst he attacked it, he didn't want to eat it, or couldn't. So I waited a few days, and we tried again, and this time he went straight for it. And he really did seem to enjoy it, devouring it, but they do say to not work with animals or children, and the next day he was out of the aquarium. And I wasn't really expecting him to turn into a dragonfly so fast, but I can't complain really. He's going to do it in his own time. So he started pumping blood into his wings, and soon he had a skinny thorax and some nice looking wings. And the next day, well, he was complete. And like a little helicopter, he started getting his muscles ready to fly. And his release went, well, as well as you'd expect with the flying creature. Um, he stayed around the pond for a little bit, but after a few hours he'd vanished, so clearly he'd gone on. Now this left me with a little bit of a conundrum. I didn't have anything in the aquarium now, so I went to the filter of my pond and got some water louse and some leeches. Now water louse are also known as isopods. Now these were detritivores, so they clean up the aquarium and they'd probably overpopulate if they didn't have a predator. So I locked in one of my fry tanks, and there he was, a little damselfly larva. So I scooped him out of the fry tank so he wouldn't eat any of my babies, and we put him in the aquarium. It was quite clear I'd made the right decision, they were so fun. The water louse were just going around the aquarium cleaning all the roots, and I also saw a little hydra, it's like a freshwater anemone, alongside the leeches. With the sheer density of prey animals, the damselfly wouldn't put a dent in the population, and it was probably only eating the copepods anyway, and as soon as the water louse started breeding, there was no chance. The damselfly was surrounded by the isopods and the leeches, and as they went past, it would be almost like having a cow walk in front of you. You know you can eat it, but it's just too big to have in one bite. 
The leeches, well, they've not got eyes, so they spent most of the time just flailing around. The freshwater cytopods covered every surface, grazing like cattle, and well, breeding like rabbits. Now this breeding wasn't sustainable, because they didn't really have any predators, which meant they were going to have too many herbivores and detritivores, so it was time to get a couple of predators, and that meant a trip down to a different pond. So this pond is derelict, and it's been like this for at least a couple of years, because a couple of years ago this was completely clear, and it was filled up to about here, but it's been left to rot, and in doing so the water level is only about that deep, which means all of the bugs inside of it have been concentrated, so every single scoop I've got I managed to get, get something interesting. I foraged away for some more predators, and we ended up with a little cup, and some of them weren't predators at all. I wasn't quite done though, and I wanted to get a few more, so I went down to the stream. If you don't know, the best way to catch creatures in a stream is to stamp your feet and put a net in front of you, so the water flows into it. It does look a bit silly, but I promise you the best way to do it. And it worked! Doing this, I found two really impressive damselfly nymphs. And from the pond, we got diving beetles. As you can see, he's got a little bubble on his bum, and that is actually what he's breathing through. The same goes for this darter nymph. He's pulsing, moving water through his bum, through the whole of his body. The same is true for the water bug. They have to put their bum to the surface to breathe. They can be underwater for a long time, but they've always got to come back up. And it does add a certain level of charm that all our little creatures breathe through their bottoms. Although in the background you can see my favourite inhabitants by far, a greater pond snail. He dwarfed everything else in the aquarium and he was just so fun with his little ears. And seemingly he also wanted to breathe from the surface too. Now the old inhabitants needed to hide away now, so they didn't get eaten. So they dug out a little area, and they hid in the shadows, although there was still a lot of them. With our hunters now out on the prowl, well, they started a little coalition of sorts. They all seemed to hang out in one corner of the aquarium, which is pretty cool. I also caught a lot of scud from the streams. Now these little shrimps wouldn't overpopulate really quickly, so I only added one or two of them. But our apex predator definitely had to be the diving beetles. Look at his jaws! In general, all the predators seemed to get along, and just went after the isopods and leeches. And the tank felt alive, with water beetles going round at a million miles an hour, it was just really fun to watch, even though the snail was still my favourite. I seemingly caught the water boatmen eating the most, and I think that's probably because they suck the fluid out of their prey, instead of eating the entire thing like the water beetles. And really, it was quite brutal to watch, but it is nature so we let it take its course. But with death, there was also life, and for everything eaten, there was something born. And everything was growing as well, as you could see by the molting exoskeletons. And the ice pods continued to breed. I felt I'd brought my pond onto my desk, and I was really happy with it, even if it was a little bit overgrown. It was just so busy, and it was exactly what I set out to do.